Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 159. The more scared we are of work or of a calling, the more sure we can be that we have to do it. Stephen Pressfield. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Now, guys, I'm excited to talk about our new sponsor, Film Convert. Film Convert, I used heavily on creating the cinematic look I got on my film, This Is Meg. It helps you give your digital video footage a beautiful cinematic look of film instantly. Whether you're shooting on a GoPro, a DSLR, a RED, an Alexa, a Black Magic, it doesn't matter. Film Convert has created specific camera profiles for every, almost every camera on the planet so it can adjust to your footage. Film Convert gives you the power to create amazing looking cinematic images with just a couple clicks. And of course, because you guys are part of the Indie Film Hustle tribe, you get 10% off Film Convert by using the coupon code HUSTLE. But you can try this software for free, guys. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Film Convert. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash Film, C-O-N-V-E-R-T. Today's show is also sponsored by Digital Box Office. Now, Digital Box Office is a global provider of streaming movies, television, and all sorts of original content. DBO provides a dramatic new opportunity for indie filmmakers to gain previously unavailable global exposure and valuable analytics. Now, the service is going to be a data mine for Hollywood and for indie filmmakers as digital box office users are required to vote on the content that they watch on the platform via DBO's proprietary single one-click voting model. Now, you can submit your film today at upload.digitalboxoffice.tv and you can browse their current selection at www.digitalboxoffice.tv. You can also download the app for ISO or Android at the Google Play and Apple App Store. Now, before we get started, guys, I wanted to give you an update on the film This Is Meg. We will be releasing it in August. I just got back word. Uh, The exact date yet is we're just narrowing it down with iTunes, and we will be releasing it in August sometime. So I will have special links, special pricing for everybody in the tribe, of course, for anybody interested in purchasing or renting it early. Now, I'm going to have a whole episode on our battle plan, on what we're going to be doing with iTunes, how we're going to release it on iTunes. Uh, We're actually going to be doing a little quick documentary series on Distribber and how we're going to be going through their pipeline to get This Is Meg out into the world. And uh, I'm I'm going to share with you guys everything that happens. Uh, The good, the bad, and the ugly on the release of This Is Meg. What we could do better, what we could have done better, what we could have uh, done more of. But uh, I'm hoping that we'll have a successful release and uh, get, get this little movie out into the world, man. So I will give you guys more updates on that. But if you want to hear more about it, just head over to thisismeg.com. Now, today's guest is Hilton Ariel Ruiz. He is the creator of Zombie with a Shotgun. And uh, the reason I wanted to bring Hilton on the show is I kept seeing this Zombie with a Shotgun concept keep popping up everywhere on my social media feed. And I was like, wow, this guy really understands how to build a brand from the ground up. He is an independent filmmaker who created this concept and has now take the bull by the horns and is running with it. And I wanted to kind of pick his brain on seeing how he's doing it, what his plans are with the property and what we can learn from him in regards to how to market our films, how to go after an audience, how to feed that audience, uh, how to create ancillary products like merchandising, t-shirts, hats, posters, things like that, comic books, uh, all sorts of stuff. So Without any further ado, enjoy my conversation with Hilton Ariel Ruiz. I'd like to welcome to the show Hilton Ruiz, man. How are you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, man? What's up, Alex? Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you, man. Thank you. You are the first uh you are the first guest on the show that is uh recording from uh, a parking lot uh of Popeyes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yes, I am actually in the parking lot of Popeyes. I was actually 
heading into the city and I'm like, uh, am I going to make it? I'm going to make it. Cause I know you was going to call me. And then uh, I remembered I had to do something and I'm like, damn, I'm not going to make it. So now I'm in Popeye's parking lot. Yep. So you're the first one. So, uh, get, get some biscuits when you're done, would you? Absolutely. Definitely <laughs> will. With jelly too. Yeah, dude. Good times. Good times. <laughs> so, um, so Hilda, man, tell me how zombie with a shotgun came to life, man. Zombie with a shotgun came to life, uh, about five years ago. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, you've been with this for a while. I've been this for a while, and it, and it has a really interesting story about why it kept on coming back to me. And, you know, when I first did it, you know, it was basically to do like a web series. You know, as all filmmakers we are, we, 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 we do a project and see if that project can grow. Uh, we try to take a project for possibly investors to see, if, you know, if mm-hmm. they could look into the short film and could see the possibilities of this being a feature and being something that Got is it. something to invest in. So what happened is I... Did Zion with a Shotgun web series. I did the first episode. And when I did the very first episode, I can say that was like the very first time that I, I would say myself, I experienced something that went viral. Mm-hmm. And it, I started getting a lot of like, you know, a lot of follows. And what, what was amazing was getting a lot of emails. People wanted to do interviews. What is this? Is this a feature? What is this? It started going crazy. So mm-hmm. I was like, wow. And, you know, that's what you really want when you do a project. But mm-hmm. I just never had expected that it would be for a zombie with a shotgun and so, why you know, wouldn't I, I, why wouldn't you think that i mean when you when i heard this concept i'm like this is perfect <laughs> like it's just you know you, you know i i i i think maybe the reason why i didn't expect it is because you know there's so many other projects i was working on and you know it was a project that you feel like oh this is going to be the one this has such a great thing going on a great concept this is you know i put so much heart and soul into it and the zombie with a shotgun was more kind of like this is going to be fun and, you know, this is going to be so cool. I'm going to do this. This is a fun damn project and everything, you know. And and I think that expectation of just being, you know, being this fun project that just want to do something that, you know, is cool. Well, just, you know, not 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 so much concept or so much story into it and make everybody experimental complicated. Right, right. And I think that's what it was. And, uh, yeah, at, at the long run, you'd be like, yeah, you're right. Why wouldn't it be, you know, be very you know, get popular. And also I have a lot of other friends that, did, you know, everyone who's into horror probably did a zombie project. And many of my other filmmaker my colleagues never experienced, you know, something that I experienced with zombie with a shotgun. And I think that's another thing also, but I, I, I was able to experience it. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I mean, the reason why I wanted you on the show is because I, you know, I've, I saw, I saw the viral aspect of a zombie with a shotgun. I just kept seeing the poster or the images fly up through my Twitter or my Facebook. And I was like, man, that's a genius concept. Like, it's just a ge- it's just, it's, it's, it's a high concept. It's super high concept. It doesn't get any simpler than what's the movie about? It's a zombie with a shotgun. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. Like, you get it right from the title. It's extremely high concept. Uh, and it's specifically very, gen- very, um, very targeted to its demographic. Like, you know, if you like zombies and you like shotguns, you're going to love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you self-financed the, the original web series? Yes. I self-financed the, the you know, they're, they're very small, uh, you know, like four, between four and five minutes, the, this, uh, the, web, the, web, the episodes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we plan to actually do a lot more episodes, but we were only able to do five uh the lead actor and you know and the actress did not live in new york Mm -hmm. uh the lead actor did live in new york but then he moved to california was getting a lot more you know jobs out there and everything moved out there and uh his dying with a shotgun also helped him you know uh getting other things also so i understood that you know i understood so it was really hard to get him back and forth but when ever had the chance to come to new york we shot an episode so in total we did five Okay. And did, yeah. what did you do for marketing? Did you actually push this out there? Or how did it get the viral kind of uh, yeah. action? No, you know, I, and my first plan was, you know, I did not market it at all. What I just did is just put it up on a Vimeo. Mm-hmm. I just put it a first episode on Vimeo. And I think I did a YouTube at first. And then, um, yeah, that's it. And then it just, like I said, it just caught on so quick. And uh, what helped a lot is, uh, that a lot of people wanted to do interviews. A lot of people wanted to talk about it a lot, you know, so that was starting to, you know, stack up a lot, of course, you know, and with that fan base and the other fan base. So started getting, you know, the promotion where, uh, it was coming from a lot of 
other outlets that were interested in zombie with a shotgun. Now, so basically once you – and I've seen this happen and I've, it's happened to me as well when you do a project and all of a sudden there's a lot of attention on it. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. You kind of, you know, sometimes you are ready for it, but most of the times you're not. So when you finally got all this attention, you're like, wait, wait a minute, I've got something here. What was the next step that you took? You're like, okay, well, it's this is not just a little thing anymore. Now I can actually turn this into something. What was your next step? Yeah, that definitely what you said was definitely everything you said was true. I, I, you know, I, I was it, it grew, and I said to myself, oh man, I, I have a responsibility now because again, going back to what I said. Every, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to get that project where it gets popular and people want to see more of it. And, and here it is. It was right here in my lap. And, you know, uh, you know, at first, uh, before anything, at first I didn't really pay attention to it because I thought it was like a fad. I thought it was something <laughs> that was just gonna, it was just gonna go away, mm-hmm. you know? And I started doing other projects, but dude, it just, people just was so into it and kept on and, getting emails and emails and in my Twitter feed and everything was messages and everything. So I said, like you said, I have to do something. And that's when I met this gentleman by the name of uh, Simone uh, Guglielmini. Mm-hmm. He's out in Italy. He's a famous comic book artist. He, you know, contacted me and we started talking. He loved the whole idea. And, and um, you know, we talked about possibly creating a comic book. And at first, yeah, yeah, whatever. So, and we we just kept on talking weekly and he was like dude let's let's collaborate you know you write the story the script and everything i want to read it and see what we can do I, you know I'll, I'll draw a comic book for you so i was like you know what this might be the next step this should be the next step you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um you know it's you know how it is i don't have to tell you alex it's, yeah. it's hard to go out there to find people for money just to give you money it doesn't dude, work that's it's it's called a unicorn it's a, that's a unicorn sir it's it's, it's yeah. if you see one it's a it's a miracle <laughs> Yes. So it's like, you know what? This is the best thing to do. So, uh, um, so Simona, you know, what he did, which is really smart, and we go back to the marketing thing. Him and I decided that, okay, while he's drawing the comic books, a, a, every week he will take one of his sketches from one of the pages that he draws from the comic book. And we will promote that that week and talk mm-hmm. about this is what's happening, blah, 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 with the poster with the web series and everything through social so media, through week, social, through social media, through social media. And this is why it got such more, the popularity grew because then, then you had the comic book world come in. Then you had, you know, of course the film, the short films, you know, everything, the zombie world, the horror world, and now the whole comic book thing. And then when they found out that the, the artist was a popular artist that's already drawn for like, you know, image comics and everything, they were like, wow, this guy came on board to do this comic book. And, that's every week we had more images. So every week that went by, I had so much material to work on on social media. And like by now I have, dude, I, I don't know, I have like maybe a hundred and something images that I, I had so many that I could work on on a daily basis and everything. But, you know, I, I usually, you know, I, I put, you know, the best ones that I like, I feel and everything. So that was that. That was the next step. And then, you know, uh, obviously the feature was next. Mm-hmm. The, the, the mountain that we all... All of us want to climb. <laughs> no matter who you yeah. are in the film business, if you're the biggest television guy in the world, biggest web, biggest whatever, everybody's like, oh, but the feature. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And so so what was um, – so, so at this point, you've already released five episodes, right? Uh, you've got a, episodes, you've right? got a comic book. What kind of following do you have on like Twitter and Facebook and stuff? As in what? As in like uh, followers in general. Like, was it starting to grow to a point which was like, wow, I can't, I can't even believe that this many people are interested in this. Yes, I mean, it definitely, it just kept on growing to the point that you know, um, you know, you started when you start hearing it from everybody else. That's when you know you got something going on. You know, some people was like, dude, like, you, you, you're, you're, you think it just keeps on growing and growing and growing, and then you know, it's just the messages, and then you know, I started getting like, you know five messages to 10 messages a day to 20 messages a day. And I'm mm-hmm. like, five. you know, I was like, damn, I, this, this is, this is something. And you know, you don't, you don't, you know, when you get to that point, you, you start to, a lot of other things come into your head. Like, Oh man, 
what do I do? You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know it's kind of like it's kind of like the dog that is constantly chasing the car, and then one day he catches it. <laughs> He's like, "What do I do? With, what do I do with this? I've I've been chasing this goddamn car for for years now. I finally caught it. What do I do with it?" So, yeah, absolutely. It, it's that's as filmmakers, we're just we're kind of trained not to expect stuff like that to happen. Exactly. So when it exactly. does, we just like, what, what do I, what do I do now? So, yeah. And actually that's what, again, one of the reasons I, I, I brought you on is because I, I have been down this path uh, with other of my projects and, and it was very interesting to see how you, how you shifted, how you um, pivoted and started growing with it and figuring things out uh, as you went through your, through your journey with zombie mm-hmm. with a shotgun. And then, uh, then you also created. Uh, can you talk a little bit about about the the crowdfunding campaigns? Okay, so again, you know, you know, it's funny because it's, it it will be five years in August that I, st- I I released the first episode, and it's funny. It doesn't feel that long. It doesn't feel long, but it's just time just yeah. flies. And oh, just, brother, tell t- t- tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know how old you are, but but I just woke up. I'm like I'm 40. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. It, it just time flies. I'm like, dude, it doesn't. It didn't even feel like that. So, what happened was, again, you know, from another, you know, you know this. Obviously, you know, you have the comic book, you know, in production. You mm-hmm. have the five episodes. You got this great fan base, and you got this thing just keeps growing. You say, okay, you know what? I think that I think now I could go to people. I can ask people for money. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, you know, you do what you have to do. You mm-hmm. reach out to as many people, as many producers. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially that's on the field and you talk to all, you know, the people that, you know, are in the industry and you try to figure out, okay, who's going to bite? Um, nobody, nobody did, you know, wow. it, it was just, yeah, it was basically, I love the concept, but I don't want to be the first penguin to jump into the world. Oh God, I hate, don't you, you hate know, that like, shit? I, I, if oh. you have somebody else that's going to jump with you, going to jump, I'll jump in with them. And, you know, you get all – also, you, you, how many BS artists you get? You get so many BS artists. Yeah, yeah, I have this for you. And then you wait for like four or five months. The guy disappears. How many st- – I mean all independent Jesus. filmmakers know the story. Oh, my God. The money's dropping. Time. Money's dropping any day now. Any yeah. day the money's yeah, going to yeah, drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an escrow. It's an escrow. <laughs> the money's an escrow. It's coming any day now. It's going to come. It's a rich guy from England. He doesn't – I mean it's, this is nothing to him. Don't you, don't you love that one? Oh, what is it? Yeah. How much do you need? Five million? That's nothing. <laughs> Oh yeah, it is a write off. That's a write off. That's yeah. nothing. Don't worry about people right now listening to the podcast are like, but but that's what they said to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know, right? I hate to tell so, you guys, whoever's listening, if they just said that, it's probably not going to happen. So <laughs> it, it's pretty amazing, man. Everybody, oh, like filmmakers that went through this road know the whole story. So you know, I was never a fan of crowdfunding, but as an independent filmmaker as we are, you, you're just going to have to do it. Yeah, and it's, yeah. You have to do it, man. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I just don't want to put myself out there and, and beg. The you're beg- you, you're thing. and you're begging. You're begging for money. Like, hey guys, you're I need help. For- yeah, uh, but and go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. So what happened is, I said to myself, eventually, you know, I'm like, dude, I have to do this crowdfunding thing. Um, I I I went on the crowdfunding last year. Uh, I forget one month. I don't know. It was April, May. Started crowdfunding. And, and, you know, it, it's a priceless experience and all independent filmmakers should go through it. It's such a priceless experience. I know Oof. you know about it, Alex, but Oof. I went in it, I first went in it with the um, uh, Kickstarter mm-hmm. and, and I went for the Kickstarter, didn't reach to go. I knew at a month that I would not reach to go and I had to close it down, which was unfortunately, it was, it brutal. was so like, it's brutal, bad. Yeah, it's brutal. Brutal, dude. You know, I was almost halfway uh, you know, at first I think it was like fifty grand I was gonna raise, and I was like up to twenty something, and I was like, Damn. "This is why this is why I don't like Kickstarter because of that bullshit." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I know that. I learned horrible. it the hard way. I yeah. learned it the hard way. Uh, and and you know, whatever it is, what it is, it happened. I went to Indiegogo, um, and you know, sometimes I feel like, damn, if if Indiegogo, if Kickstarter was the same thing as Indiegogo, I would have raised more money because I lost a lot of like investors. Sure, that were already in for Kickstarter. So again, you know, a lot of people that are listening too, you know, a lot of people, I always tell them just because you don't reach the goal doesn't mean you can't make your film because I did. I made the film even though I didn't even reach the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, look, dude, I've been so many years doing film. I mean, I, dude, I can do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's so I, I didn't reach the goal, but I, 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 I got some, you know, 
you know, I got some monies from other places there and there. So we had a pretty good budget. We started in, I think, like I said, April, May, and then I had to open it up. And then uh, June and July was the go, um, the Indiegogo. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, and I'm such a crazy guy. I'm This is crazy stuff. I don't suggest anybody to do what I did. As soon as I finished the, the Indiegogo, which was like in the first week of July, in one month I started production. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What'd you say? What, say, say that again? <laughs> Uh, I, hey, listen, I'm a crazy, this is crazy. It's coming from a crazy guy, very ambitious, but don't do what I did. Was it a so month, one at, month, one month after you month closed, after. you just like hell with it. We're shooting. Yes. And I tell you why. It's, it's, <laughs> you know what? This is such a BS crazy. because it's no matter crazy. what month it would have been, I would have still done the same thing. But sure, I'm just sure. going to give it, I'm going to rationalize. I'm going to, you know, just, you just, just the reason filmmakers why. Filmmakers are good. Filmmakers are good at rationalization. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to say it. The reason why was because, uh, September, well, you know, it was July, mm-hmm. and we had August, and mm-hmm. then September. Everyone goes back to school. It's oh, very hard sure. for actors. Going blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then and then you know, September, and then after that is October, and October. You know, I just didn't. You know, I I just didn't. I was like, it's either it was either August or October. Mm-hmm. September, hell no. Mm-hmm. November, you got everyone going to you know Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, November fifteenth, you're done all the way to June, June yeah. January fifteenth. That's it. It's done. Yeah. So I said August. We have to do it in August. So you know we did it in August, and uh, uh, the day I started was uh, a heat wave. It was the three hottest days of the summer. It was it, sure. It was it was. <laughs> sure, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah, it, 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 it just has to be like that. And then you know we we. Uh, you know, we shot the film. We, we we did as much as we possibly can for the budget that we had. Mm-hmm. And you know, we did go back and we shot some scenes. You know, some extra scenes throughout. You know, in the next couple months from there. Mm-hmm. And now this know, is the right fe- now, now this is the feature, right? Yes, correct. Okay. okay. And you know, right now we are still in post. Uh, we 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 feel we should have something in the next month, like a I would say a, a possibly locked uh, cut. And mm-hmm. from there we go to you know the other fun stuff, which is, huh? Well, we shoot another scene to make this sen- make sense. <laughs> so let me ask you. So let me ask you a question because I know yep. this is something that a lot of filmmakers go through. For me, being in post and being my own editor, uh, when I did my feature film, I was I was done cutting it in three weeks, and and then I was finished with it within another month. I had everything done: audio, color, the whole ball of wax what's taking so long and why is it taking so long? Just so other filmmakers don't understand and also feel your pain. Money. Yeah, there it uh, is. It comes, <laughs> yep. It's money. I mean, you, you know, you, 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 there's so much that I can do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm going to need somebody to come in like a visual effects artist. I'm going to need a, a, a title, uh, you know, a, a sound mix. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need a freaking composer. Colorist, uh, colorist, uh, yeah. colorist, uh, and um, you know, just so many things. You know, uh, ADR. You know, come in back with sound, fix sound, go back to. It's so much elements there that, like, you're right. A lot of people don't understand that. And then after that, you know, you you know, the other thing people don't understand is, okay, I finished the film, I got everything done. Okay, you release it next week. No, because if you want to go distribution, you got to wait till when their slot of releasing films out, and that could be. Six eight months. Down so let the road. me so let me ask you a question though. Are you going to self distribute this, or are you going to try to get a distribution deal out of this? Uh, that is the that is a big question. I I'm 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 going to be honest with you, Alex. I don't know until I think I will have that answer once I look at that final cut, and I can say to myself, you know, do I have still more in the tank to self distribute? That's the, uh, that's the thing with self-distribution, man. Cause you gotta, it's, 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 it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm about, what it is. I'm about to self-distribute my feature this summer. And, uh, but let, let me put, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you do, you, do you want some unsolicited advice? Yeah, do it. I mean, I have, I have my theory that what I'm thinking to do, I can say it out also what I'm thinking to do. So what are you going to do? Can, what are you going to do? I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is my, you know, for, for uh, independent filmmakers out there, 
you know, I, I'm thinking I'm going to go international. I, I, I'm going to go Canada and Europe. Uh, just, you know, somebody to get Canada, Europe. You could take, you know, whoever wants it, you could take that. Mm-hmm. And domestic, I'm probably going to, I'm, I, I think I'm going to take a stab at self distributing and doing it myself here in, in, in domestically. Okay. Uh, I know they have Quiver. I know they have uh, Distributor and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I've been looking through all that stuff. Um, so, that's that's my that's what I'm thinking. I've talked to many people, as you know, and, and a lot of people, even professionals out there, I spoke to. I don't, know, I don't know, whatever you call it, professional, but people that have been really experienced, mm-hmm. telling me that for for my for my project, they think that's something that I should do. So, I mean, tell me what do you what, give me some of your advice. My advice is that, well, first of all, I would throw my name. I would throw distributor in there without question. They're the guys. If yep. you're going to go self distribution, they're better than Quiver and, and many aspects of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm biased because I work with them all the time, and they're distributing my movie. But they're they're really good people, good people. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I would say is, from my experience of delivering God knows how many feature films over the course of my career, a project like this, because you have a fan base already here in the states and overseas, um, and you have a and, and the and basically the 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 cost of the project is fairly low for you. In other words, you don't have two hundred thousand dollars. You don't have a mortgaged house on this, correct? No. All right. No, exactly. no, you you laugh, but I, I know these guys. I know. Yes, I, know I know them. Too. I know, I know that the guy, well, yeah. I had a friend of mine, a, a, a buddy of mine, is like, yeah, I just finished my feature. I'm like, what? What? what how much it costs? Oh, it costs two hundred fifty. I'm like, okay, but it has no stars in it. It's, it's nice. It looks great, but it's no stars in it, and. And it's kind of like a not a genre piece, but it's kind of like a drama action or a drama thriller. And he's, yeah. I'm like, "Where'd you get the money?" He's like, "Yeah, I mortgaged my house." I'm like, "Are you an idiot? Yeah, like, why wow. on God's green earth would you do that?" And I I've no done multiple way. rants on my podcast about that. Uh, that don't don't do that. It's it's no. it's, it's not sexy anymore. It's it, look. Kevin no. Kevin Smith did it. That's fine, but don't do it anymore. It's just no. Yeah. So w- with this kind of project, I would say because you don't have any any bankable stars in it, the thing that sells your movie is the concept, zombie with a shotgun. Yep. So zombie yep. with a shotgun can pretty much sell anywhere in the world. Uh, it doesn't matter who's in it because of purely of the concept alone. The the poster yep. art, the concept, it sells itself. For you, I don't foresee you getting any upfront money from distributors for a film like this um no. just don't see it i, I agree yeah I, I in today's I, world I, I, in today's marketplace very difficult and if you get anything yep. but you could find people to help you distribute overseas or or distribute uh internationally in one way shape or form yep. but i think your plan of staying in uh distributing it yourself in in the in domestic is absolutely the way to go there's no question because mm-hmm. you have an audience already yes you, yes. Ha- you have an audience so if you are able to market to that audience and push it you can get it up on itunes get it up on uh on amazon uh possibly sell it out to hulu uh for svod or for or uh, netflix or amazon prime uh and then but you could do tvod first there's uh, multiple different uh distribution yeah. um strategies for it but i think that's the way to go man there's no question about it yeah i, I say dude i have got like i said i've spoken to so many people they've st- 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 like the guys that really know their their stuff yeah that's exactly what you're saying and that's yeah. that's basically the plan that i was telling you just, that's going domestic with like you said distributor uh and international i give it to somebody I don't expect – again, I, you're absolutely right. There's no star actors, so there's no money really going to come up. You know, I, I, I already you – know, you know, those deals, you, know, you just know that they're going to happen. I mean a lot of people have high, high expectations when they do a feature. They think they're going to get – I already know that there's nothing going to be upfront money. So I already feel you know, what's already going to happen. So that's basically the plan that I want to do. And I think that – I think it could do well mm-hmm. uh, you know, in that, that sort of strategy and where it can take me to the next level. Now, what have you? Uh, obviously, are you selling the comic book now? I, I can't hear you say. Are you selling the comic book now? Yeah, the comic book is releasing next month. Okay, uh, and the second issue should be uh, promoting uh, advertising in the next like couple of weeks. So, so we're, you- we're 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 we've gotten to the point where uh, right where the movie is about to like you know get the the locked and everything. The comic books is coming out, so it's it's a, it's going to be a pretty a really exciting year 
to see how much further the design with shotgun is going to go. It's definitely, you know, it's been going, you know, um, design with shotgun just, it's taken off. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Absolutely. Now, the the one of the again the other reasons I wanted to get you on the show is because your your film and your property has the ability and the potential to turn into a Turbo Kid to turn into a Kung Fury uh, kind of property. Are you familiar with those two movies? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So those guys made, I mean, bank like serious bank off. Of, I mean, Kung Fury alone. It was all, I mean, just off of merchandising alone, they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I know the guys who put together Turbo Kid, they've been on the show already and, and they're doing, and they're still selling um, T-shirts and things like that. So personally, I think you have the potential to create multiple revenue streams where the movie is the least of your of your income. I agree. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree. And you know, you know uh, and Alex, is, it, you know, you know this as well. It's just... Dude, it's the is that gas in the tank and taking it to the next level, and I, you know, you got, well, I'm dude, a one I, man show, brother. You're talking to another one man show, brother. I, yeah, I, I, I'm I, a one man show. I, I feel and, you. And, and, go ahead. No, I feel. Look, I feel you. The thing is, for something like this, you got to start bringing in strategic partners. You've got to start bringing in people that can help you get your thing, like you did with the comic book. You found someone yeah, who no, could partner I, I, with. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I mean, I'm trying to get people to come in, like I got with the comic book. You know, I got, I, you know. A lot of people was telling me that – here's another example. People tell me that I should self-distribute the freaking comic. I'm like, hell no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I spoke to very experiencing, very yeah, experienced no. comic book artists and, and, and they've told me, dude, do not do that. You know, So I brought people to come in as a publisher company coming in. They're, they're going to be handling all that stuff. I just can't do everything one-man show. So with the merchandising, it is something that's – that. Uh, working on right now you know setting up a, a new web page mm -hmm. uh getting like you said shirts posters and stuff like that so that's the next thing that i'm working on trying to get somebody on uh, the right person to come on to you know have the whole logistics down lay that layout of the website merchandise and everything so that's some that is the next step that uh, we're working on i mean for, i mean you have the potential man to turn this into an industry uh, at least a small business uh, you know that you can actually start generating serious revenue with because just again on the concept alone of the ip of zombie with a shotgun people who don't yeah. even care about the movie We'll buy a T-shirt with, with zombie with a shotgun. I totally agree with you, dude. Listen, I, and you know, you know, I'm gonna say it out now on the show. I already have people offer me for the IP. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure the, yeah. the IP is is an insane IP. It's a great yeah. IP, and you should. And when I say, uh, by the way, anyone who doesn't know what an IP is, is intellectual property. That's what Hollywood runs on. It's all intellectual properties. You know, Disney, Star Wars, Star Wars, pretty decent IP. Um, <laughs> Indi Indiana Jones, pretty decent IP. Uh, yeah, you know. So uh, Marvel, pretty decent IP. So, yeah. but that's how Hollywood runs. So you have in the in this genre a very very powerful IP. That you should be able to milk and and get multiple revenue streams from, uh, without question. So, you you ask yourself if you have the gas in the tank. Uh, my advice to you is, dude, if you don't have gas in the tank, no, go 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 to the gas station and fill the fuck up, <laughs> because this yeah. because this won't happen again. This might no. not happen again, so you've got to take it advantage. It won't happen again, and you know, that's you know. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a really quick story. Mm -hmm. I I had uh, like I said, I've been approached with a lot of people. I had a, actually an attorney uh, contact me, somebody who was interested in the IP, and um, you know, I, you have to have those discussions because you don't know later on. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get back to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So one of the discussions that the attorney was telling me was like. You know, just, you know, uh, you could take this out of your hands and start another one. I'm like, dude, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't happen like that. I said, it just, it won't happen again like that. It, it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, you just don't come the next day and say, okay, I got this another idea and it's going to grow just the same way as the first idea. And Light, the lightning in a bottle. It's lightning in a bottle. It's very yeah, difficult to get. It's not going to happen again. I mean, you know, yeah, no, I'm, I'm never saying never, but 
I'm not going to take that chance. <laughs> no, I mean, look, 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 George Lucas got one idea and he really rode that hard, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and he, he built an empire off that one idea and grew, you know, and then, uh, and then he also had Indiana Jones and that was another lightning in the bottle. So he got it twice. Um, but, but the point is that, yeah, you should definitely take advantage of this, man. And, uh, and I'm sorry that the interviews turned a little bit more into a, a counseling session. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, all the things, all the things that you said, you know, dude, I've gotten, you know, probably like the 1000 person has told me, and, okay. and, you know, and I, I, I've, I've, like I said, I've, I've been doing everything that, you know, um, that, that I've been doing the right thing all, all along. You know, and um, the, 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 to me, uh, the very one of the most important things for me for the zombie with a shotgun uh, before I went into venturing to the merchandising aspect is the comic book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the comic book world is 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 its own oh. freaking monster. Oh, dude! And, if you go to comic cons with this, are you kidding me? Yes. So oh. that to me, because a lot of people, you see what you was telling me about the merchandising. People was telling me to do that, and I'm, I to me was yes. But I needed the comic book to be established. I needed I needed to get the artwork. I needed to get the team of you know of this going. And I felt once that comic book, you know, gets you know we get the publisher, we get the ball rolling, we start selling the comics. And you know, look, I tell you, next month the first one, a couple of weeks we're going to announce the second issue, and then in a couple, uh, maybe even six weeks, we have the third issue, and then so on and so on. So that is working. We we we're continuing like now the comic book is is a thing and it's going to be going and I feel something's going to be taking, it's going to keep on going more than the film wise or whatever it is. So that to me is really important. We got it going. And then if we're going to the next step for, for zombie with a shotgun, I mean, again, for, for the audience listening, I mean, again, what I wanted Hilton on the show is because I, I wanted to show you a model of something that's like, I, you know, Kung Fury, Turbo Kid, those guys have already done their thing, but yeah. we actually caught you, basically towards the middle beginning of this of this journey and the beginning of really this of really pushing this out to a a much larger audience and starting creating to create multiple revenue streams yeah. and, and to think as an entrepreneur and, as opposed to just a filmmaker absolutely and you know to the audience also you know i, I mean like us to, to like turbo kid and all those and those other projects you know uh, dude i went in with no money you know, those are the projects, you know, they raise their monies to get what they could get, mm-hmm. and, you know, just to let the audience know that, you know, you can do it. You, know, you could go out there and come with some idea and a couple hundred bucks here and there and get your idea going and it takes off. You if know, you have a strong enough idea, absolutely. Yeah. Abs- yeah. Absolutely. So I have a few questions I ask all my all my guests. Um, so prepare yourself. These are the Oprah questions. Uh, <laughs> what, ready. All right, what advice would you give a filmmaker just starting out? Oh, wow. Um, basically, you know, the 10,000 hour rule definitely applies to this. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you definitely if, if somebody ever heard that before and it definitely works, for, applies for this uh, being a filmmaker and anything. But I, 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 you know, a lot of times I tell a lot of filmmakers, um, you know, just as long as you believe in that one project that you want to do and stay passionate about it. You'll get a team that will believe in it because you have to believe in that project, and you you know make sure it is the project that you know that that you feel is going to work or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know it's your artwork. But <clears throat> as long as you feel passionate about the project and you feel strong about it, you create this aura around it because then when you start getting the team assembled, they see you believe in it and they start to believe in it, and that's very important in a project is to get that backing of you know because it is a team it's a team effort it's a team project it's never one guy doing it so once you get so many people like for example with zombie with a shotgun it's very hard to do and because they believe in it they see it and say oh man you know the filmmaker who created this believes in it so much he that must mean it's something there so that's what i tell a lot of big filmmakers that go out there just make sure you believe in the stuff that you do okay fantastic advice and what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn in the film business or in life? Um, a team. Again, I go back to that. I go back to that. You know, you start to realize that you know it's it's a team effort, 
You know, mm-hmm. it's not you. It's not you're not the only guy doing it. You have to have everybody around you do. You know, they have to. Everyone that goes a hundred percent. You know, uh, on the project. And without the team, you know, without help, you can't do it. You need help. No, as as Bon Jovi says, no man is an island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need help to do to do projects and do film, and, and that's the most important. Make sure you trust that help. Make sure you trust that person. Somebody's going to be with you for a long time, or whoever, whoever comes on, maybe it's a different project, a different people. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. It's, you definitely need to make sure it's a team effort. Now, isn't it? Is it me, Hilden, or is it? Or, or do you wish sometimes you could just have a piece of canvas and a paintbrush, and that's the way you would do your art, and not have to spend obscene amounts of money and grab a bunch of people and try to get your art out there that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be awesome. But yeah, it's so true. Uh, oh God. I sometimes I wish I'm like, man, I wish I could just draw or I could just paint or I could just play a guitar. <laughs> you know, I could just, I could just do that as opposed to, man, I got to, my art is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's very yeah as we said right it's the r- rich man sport <laughs> it's the rich man sport man absolutely and uh yeah. last question uh what are the three of your favorite films of all time uh favorite films of all time oh my god it's really hard i mean uh, of course blade runner um mm. mm-hmm. number two um that comes right top of my head um uh, a dead zone Oh yeah, uh, I love that zone. That was a great film. Oh man, I'm uh, um Oh, I Wally. Wally's awesome, man. That's it's yeah. a it's a silent movie, but it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How he was able to do that. It was between Lion King and Wally. I don't know. I mean, there's another I don't know. It just comes to my head right now. Now, because uh, tomorrow might be a different. No, no. Yeah, of course, of course. Every day is a yeah. different. It's a different list. But yeah. Uh, but very interesting that Wally is on your top three, and your and your film is Zombie with a Shotgun. <laughs> yeah, it, dude. Again, I'll go back to saying I would never expect the Zombie with Shotgun was going to be this. You know, <laughs> successful. Like it just keeps on going, dude. I mean, well, man, once I get off the phone with you, I'm going to have like. All these messages on my thing is just unbelievable. Dude, I wish you nothing but the best with your with your project and your film and we're going to tr- well I'll do the best I can to get the word out on it as well through the podcast and through what we're doing here, but thank you for dropping some good knowledge bombs and and sharing your experiences on your journey cuz you're in it with us at the same you're you're at the ground level like the rest of us just trying to Absolutely. get things made. We're, we're all together. Yeah, so I appreciate you taking the time out at the Popeye's parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and where can people well, and where can people find you man people could find me on a twitter zombie with a shotgun uh, uh of course 15 characters so it's be zombie w a shotgun um also i have zombie with a shotgun.com that right now goes right straight into tumblr mm-hmm. um the best thing i tell a lot of people is if you're really interested in zombie with a shotgun google it that first episode should come out watch the first episode and see if you like you know, if you like it, you'll get hooked and, you know, you could just search Zion with a shotgun. You'd be able to see everything on it. But if people want to ask me questions, um, I'm always in, on, on Twitter um, and somebody can sh- shoot me a tweet or they can follow me. I usually follow everybody back, ask me a question. And I, I'm, I'm always there to respond. Anybody needs help, questions, or advice, uh, I'm always there. I'm, I'm, I always ask for people. And um, that's where you could find me. Awesome, man! Awesome, and I'll put I'll put uh, the the first episode in the show notes of this episode, so everybody listening can uh, go check it out, man. Hilton, man, awesome. thank you so much for uh, for being on the show, brother. I appreciate it. No, thank you, Alex. Man, Hilton is truly a definition of indie film hustle, man. What he's doing with uh, Zombie with a Shotgun is pretty impressive and pretty inspiring. So I hope that lights a fire under all your butts to go out there and and just do it, man. There's no reason for you not to do this anymore. For God's sakes, how much more do I have to say? Just stop. You know, just stop. Don't stop listening to me. But for God's sakes, go out and do it. Go make your movie. Go make your series. Go write your screenplay. There's no real, there's no re- excuse anymore, guys. So please, I hope Hilton was a little bit of an inspiration to you. If you want links to anything me and Hilton talked about in this episode, head over to 
our show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 159. There you'll also have fine links to all of our sponsors and all of uh, his contact information as well. So guys, I'm going to continue to try to do at least two episodes a week, one new one a week, uh, and one throwback Friday a week, and possibly do more. But uh, I am in the weeds on this uh, show I'm doing for Legendary, uh, the space program, where we're doing over 100 visual effects shots per episode, uh, and we're doing we're popping them out almost weekly. It's insane. I'm going crazy. It's actually four o'clock in the morning right now. And it's honestly the only time I have uh, to record this, but I do it for you guys, man, because I love you guys and I want to make sure I keep giving you guys the inspiration, the knowledge to keep that hustle going. So on that note, keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.